Welcome back to another Reptile Jones video and this video is after the show and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the Taylor Michigan show that I just recently went to. So uh, some of you were questioning what I may have picked up and some even threw out some what you thought that I might have been getting which um, one was that very lovely uh, Mexican pine snake and uh, to be completely honest it was very tempting but I don't know enough about those that I could just purchase it without uh, doing some research so I did not end up picking that up but it was a very both of them were very beautiful specimens and uh, who knows maybe someday in the future so what I really did pick up was really nothing exciting. Again, it was just mostly feeder insects um, and some rodents to, uh, to feed the animals. And, th and that was pretty much it. Uh, now, I do have two new animals going to be coming here in the relatively near future. Actually, one for certain will be next weekend-ish. And then another one's going to be coming. We're just simply waiting on some decent shipping weather because this one's going to be be mailed to me or, or shipped to me. So I do have two new animals. Uh, it's one of the reasons I didn't pick up anything at the Taylor Show uh, because once I get these two new animals, I will be pretty much at capacity as far as being able to take care of the animals I have as their adult form. Um, now, as of today, there would be room, but you know, I've got to think ahead to when these animals are adults and how things are going to be, you know, the space is going to be divvied up between the animals. So, with that said, uh, probably after those next two animals, probably won't see anything really new. Uh, although there is a third animal kind of in the wings, uh, I think that I'll be taking that animal on. Uh, but that's a that's a whole other situation. It's a someone's needing to rehome this thing, and uh, you know they they really want me to have it, and it will be a, a from what I'm told, and if everything pans out, it's going to be another great ambassador animal for the reptile presentations that I do in the summertime at libraries and whatnot. So yeah, we're going to be full to capacity, but. Uh, you've heard me talk about it. We are going to be moving and I don't want to get too caught up in it just yet, but we did find a house we like that has, that will have the space, not only while I have, maybe I should just talk about that in a different video. This is a show video. Let's talk about the show. Um, so as you could probably pick up, I was really feeling the chameleons at this show. I. I really, really one day want to get back into owning and keeping and breeding and in just enjoying chameleons. I, they are one of my all-time favorite lizards. Uh, they're just, they can be difficult, I don't want to say difficult, they can be tricky to keep if you're not on your game and, you know, and of course I've done videos on this in the past where you know I have problems with the way care sheets are done but I think I've got a solution figured out how to care for these animals and my and my environment set up and so that is something I am going to be exploring more into the future so there will eventually be some of these beautiful chameleons uh, that you probably see floating up here and uh, you know, ultimately, I would love. I love the fact we I can set up a nice natural vivarium for them, and I just love. I just love their individual personalities. I just I think they're pretty amazing lizards, and I, I just can't get enough of them. So, uh, as you could probably tell in this Taylor video, there was a lot of chameleon action. Some very beautiful, man. That blue, uh, panther chameleon. Holy cow! That thing was smoking hot, and as you can tell by the video was not uh, was not disturbed at all by the crowd of people coming and going walking past it he just sat up there on his perch all high and proud and you know just 
just looking quite exquisite. So, uh, and of course all the little baby chameleons, those are always cute. So I, one day, mark my words, one day you will see chameleons again on this channel. So, and just tons of other cool, awesome reptiles at the show. Um, some stuff that I had not seen before and you know, that's why I love going to these shows and sometimes, yeah, it may get to be repetitive when you go every single month, but whenever you go and you find that one new animal that you hadn't seen before, I mean, it just makes it all worth it, you know, because you just never really know what you're going to find at these shows. Um, you know, especially the Taylor show, which I'm really digging, is really starting to, you know, gain its momentum and be that variety of snakes that it used to be um, back in the earlier days when I used to go up there that was one of my favorite shows to go to because you know I'm a snake guy and that show always had a variety of snakes and you know odds are you'd always find something relatively new um, that you really either hadn't seen at all or you rarely seen and it's slowly starting to come back to that um, I don't want to call out any of the other shows but some shows are very ball python and boa heavy. Um, some are very leopard gecko, crested gecko heavy. And there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with those animals. If you're not really into them, you know, it kind of gets a little, you know, monotonous seeing the same uh, things over and over. But, you know, every show, you know, kind of has its little niche thing, what people like in that area. Um, you know, I used to sell corn snakes quite heavily back in the day, and there, I'd go to one show, couldn't hardly sell a thing, go to a different show in a different city, and sell corn snakes all day long off the table. You know, so it just, it's a regional location thing with the vast variety of people are into in the area. So that's why I like to go around to the different shows, and uh, even though they're all within like, for me, the shows I attend are a few hours away, one way or the other, but yet it's enough to make one show different than the other, than the other, than the other. So anyways, yeah, I just, I'm really excited about, you know, always attending these shows. I'm hopefully going to be visiting some new shows this summer that are a little bit more of a distance out. Uh, we're talking about the seven or eight hour drive distance away, so I am hoping and excited to be able to attend some shows further out but uh yeah so i hope you like this video uh if you know tell me about shows in your area what kind of what do you see that kind of dominates your area and uh you know just let me know I'm, I'm curious to see how you guys view your shows i know when i went down to repticon in january down in florida i seen ball python morphs uh quantities I've seen more quantities of certain ball python morphs that I don't see up here. And the ones I see a lot up here, I didn't see too many down there. So, you know, I'm just curious. Well, how do shows in your area, uh, how do they look? How, you know, what animal kind of dominates? I'm certain ball pythons always have uh, a pretty good foothold on, on a lot of shows because they're quite popular to breed. But anyways, I'm curious. Do you find good interesting stuff for your show or is it pretty much like the mainstay animals leopard geckos crested geckos ball pylons boas you know things like that or or what is it what is it about your show in your area that you like so much so uh that's going to be it for this video and until next time later shut up and sit down